Hey guys, this is Blendmaster here with another tutorial, but before I get started, I just want to say thanks for all of you who have subscribed. I've reached more than 100 subscribers, and it means a lot to see all of you supporting me and my channel. So on Google+, Plus, I've posted a poll, and you guys can vote on what uh, blend file that you want me to share with you guys, and there's four options, and all of them come from tutorials I've made. So just head over there and vote for whatever file you want and in a week I'll post that blend file so anyone can download it. So thanks again and let's get started with the tutorial. So today we'll be creating a portrait effect like this and you can use any image you want. I'll provide a link to this image in the description as well. So first thing you want to do is make sure we're in cycles render and then we're going to delete this cube in the lamp. Then I'll go to front view orthographic and add a plane by pressing shift A mesh plane. Actually I want to go to top view so you can press 7 on the numpad. And what we're going to do now is tab into edit mode and we just want to create some squares, rectangles, shapes. So just scale it up on the x axis, y axis and then duplicate it and rotate it and all you have to do is make some random shapes actually I'm going to duplicate it first and scale them before rotating them like that Okay. so depends on how much variation you want you can do this there's no real exact measurements it's all based on preferences so I think that's good. I think I'll add one more really skinny one like that. Okay. So that's looking good. And now what we're going to do is just position it and rotate it around in our scene. So if you click the uh, one vertice of an object and press Control L it'll select everything that's connected to you to it and that's just a shortcut for you guys or you could just change it to face select so I'm just positioning these and I want to make sure that there's no open spots right now like that that's good and then you can duplicate more and just scale it down like that and I think I'll add one more maybe two more okay so that's looking good and uh, I'm just gonna select everything and move it over oops okay scale that down and now what we want to do is make sure that none of these faces are overlapping like they all are right now so to fix that we're going to just individually select faces and then move them down and move them up. Okay, so like that. And we're going to do this until all the faces are different. Okay. So this. Uh, also, you want to make sure that whatever uh, ones you want are above uh, what you want. <laughs> I don't know how to word it. That sounded weird. So, just make sure that they're all separate so that there's no overlapping faces and you won't get any weird artifacts. And so then everything will look good. Okay. I think that's overlapping. Okay. And I think we're good. Okay. So now what we want to do is add or tab out of edit mode and duplicate this. I'm just going to move that to the other layer just to make sure we have a backup in case we mess up. And now what we want to do is add a new material. And I'm just going to open up a new window and change it to the node editor. 
and it's going to be a diffuse shader and we're going to mix it with a glossy shader okay and then I'm going to add a texture coordinate node and that image texture so UV there and we'll just open it okay and then I'll plug into the glossy shader as well and now we'll open up the UV image editor select our image and we'll tab into edit mode and press U project from view and if we go into texture view here we can see our image right there so I'm just going to scale this up and position it where I want it and I think that's good so now I'll just open the node editor again and we want to add a new material and this will be also a diffuse shader with a glossy shader let's do it here okay and now we want to go to vertex select and top view I'll press I'm going to change the pivot point to individual individual origins first and then I'll press E to extrude, right click, and then I'll press S to scale it up. Or is it Alt S? No, I think it's S. I'll just type in 1.1, .1, I suppose. Oh, wait, that's not what I wanted to do. Whoops. So there's no duplicate vertices. Okay. What I wanted to do was press Shift Z, move it, or Shift D, and then press Z, and move it down right under the other image. And then we'll assign it this material. And just scale that up 1.1. That. Okay. And then that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now we'll add a light. So Shift A, Mesh Plane, and I'm just gonna rotate this, scale it up, give it an emission material, white. Rotate it, and just move it around. And then I'll duplicate it and rotate it so it's over here. And I think I'll add another one here. And I'm just going to go over to the object info tab and make sure that under ray visibility, camera is unchecked for all of them. And now I'm going to add another plane. And I'm just going to make sure that this is under all of our planes. And if you're an object view and an orthographic, or solid view in orthographic view, then you won't be able to see the edges of the plane so to fix that just go to wireframe and then you'll be able to see where the bottom picture is and then we'll just scale up that plane until it's pretty big like that okay and then I'll go to rendered view with shift Z I think that's looking pretty good okay so now I'll just select this plane, the bottom one, give it a new material, and I'll give it a glossy material. Does that look good? I might mix it with the diffuse. Okay, so mix shader. Oops. there okay and I'm gonna tint this blue like that with this a very light blue tint and that's looking good I'm gonna make the shininess a little more soft and then in top view I'll press control alt 0 and it'll snap the camera to view and I'm just gonna select it and position it right above it and yep 
it's looking pretty good except right now our picture looks pretty dull so to fix that I'm going to increase the strength of our planes to 2 and this all depends on what you prefer I'm going to go into material settings and I might increase it here to take that out. No, oh, that doesn't look good. Okay, shift A, color, mix RGB. I think I'll add it together to make it brighter. Whoops. So, does that look better? Yeah, that looks a lot better. And then I might be able to make the planes one again. Ah, uh, looks better. Two. Okay. Whoops. Let's leave it like that. And then we'll go to our frame material. And I'm going to make that a pure white color. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now we'll just render out this image. So go to render settings, samples, and I'll set the samples to 100 and render it. Okay, so it's done rendering as you can see, and it looks pretty good. So this is pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave it in the comments as well. And don't forget to check out my Google Plus channel to vote on what blend file you'd like me to share with you. So, thanks again for watching. Bye.